Greetings. This is a volcano and earthquake watch for November 12 through to November 15. Powerful solar disturbances and related coronal mass ejections indicate a potential of a 7 plus magnitude earthquake during this watch. Now look at the latest solar wind telemetry from ACE where we see solar wind speeds are currently at 360 kilometers a second. Now over the next 36 to 48 hours I'm expecting solar wind speeds to jump quite rapidly due to the arrival of a coronal mass ejection impacting the Earth's magnetic field and there may be more than one and that's a good indication of a seismic shock or a significant earthquake potential when this occurs. We're now looking at a split screen of the stereo ahead and behind Core 2 imagery of coronal mass ejections released from the solar corona from November 7 to present time. Now we do see a powerful coronal mass ejection on this service and this is classified as a full halo coronal mass ejection. Now it is expected that components may hit the Earth's magnetic field sometime on November 13th. We're now looking at the Australian Pulsation PC3 index where we see a major reading on this service. Now this would be one of the largest that I've seen. Now this is of concern every time we have a large reading on this service a significant earthquake over 6.5 in magnitude is recorded in the southern hemisphere. So this would be a good indicator of an event within 48 to 72 hours. We're now looking at the SDO composite and focusing on the southern hemisphere as I do feel that there may be a significant earthquake potential based on the magnetic filament eruption that occurred pretty much in an earth facing position. Now this is a powerful eruption and it has left quite a bit of a scar on the solar corona and we're using the steel 193 angstrom and also the 171 angstrom, we do see a fairly significant feature on the solar corona. Now I do feel there are two regions that may produce earthquakes around 9 degrees south latitude and also 30 degrees south latitude. I'm now going to plot and map some regions that I feel may be at risk for a significant earthquake based on solar symmetry and my number one area of concern at 30 degrees south latitude will be the region of Kamatic Islands, and my second area of concern is for the region of Easter Islands. And my final area of concern for the Southern Hemisphere at around 30 degrees south latitude will be the regions of Santiago del Estro, Argentina, San Juan, Argentina, and also Coquimbo in Chile. This will be the main areas of concern as I do feel there is a potential of a fairly large earthquake for the Southern Hemisphere in the first two days of this watch. And there is one more feature on the solar corona that I have mentioned at around 9 degrees south latitude that may produce an event possibly 6.1 to 6.4 in magnitude. And I have settled on two regions that I feel have the most solar symmetry and that's the Solomon Islands region and also stretching towards the region of Santa Cruz Islands. These would be the main areas of concern for the southern hemisphere as I do feel there may be two separate events and also one strong event for the northern hemisphere during this watch. We're now looking at the Northern Hemisphere and we do see a significant feature on the SDO composite and this is a magnetic filament, a fairly powerful looking one which does stretch right across the northeastern limb. Now this could be indicative of a fairly strong earthquake, possibly 6.8 in magnitude for the Northern Hemisphere and I have targeted a coronal hole feature, although fairly faint in this service, stretching from 28 to 34 degrees north latitude. I'm now going to target some regions I feel may be at risk for a significant earthquake for the Northern Hemisphere and my prime area of concern is the regions south of Japan or more specifically the regions of Izu Islands and Benin Islands regions stretching over towards the Ryukyu Islands and Kyushu, Japan. These would be the main areas of concern as there is a strong solar symmetry with this fault line and trench region. My second area of concern for the Northern Hemisphere are for the regions of Gulf of California and Mexico stretching up towards Baja California and even moving into the regions of Southern California. This would be the second and final areas of concern for the Northern Hemisphere as there is a strong solar symmetry and a fairly powerful magnetic filament which may suggest a powerful earthquake. We're now looking at the outgoing long wave radiation anomaly and focusing on regions shaded in darkish green as they represent regions that may be susceptible of some significant seismic events based on radiation signatures and the main areas this week are showing up in the regions of Luzon, Philippines. Carlsberg Ridge and Gulf of Aden. There's also a strong reading showing up in Spain and France for their first time. And there's also a reading showing up in China. Now if we look across to the Atlantic, there is a powerful reading just under the Azores regions. This would be the main areas of concern in terms of outgoing long wave radiation anomaly. We're now looking at the real time ionospheric map and focusing on some large concentrations on this service. And they do seem to be in the southern hemisphere again with the main concentrations moving from Chile 
and also stretching in towards the South Pacific Islands, or more notably the regions of Solomon Islands, and also the regions of Samoa, stretching in towards Tonga. These would be the main areas of concern for this watch. Now it is important to note that this service has been extremely accurate, with the North Taiwan region having a heavy concentration last week, and we did have a very powerful earthquake in that region. And that's my Volcano and Earthquake Watch for the 10th of November, 2011. Annotations will be added during and at the end of the video. And for more information, please visit my website at solarwatcher.net. Thanks for watching.